Al, the end of March is upon us. Oh my god. And it is time for us to uh, duke it out. Pew pew pew. In a bracket. Yeah. Of sorts. Of sorts. Of sorts. Mm-hmm. Yes, hello, welcome to this week's episode of the Seasonal Anime Checkup OVA. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc, Al, and Ladium. Hello, hello. This is episode 326, and we are doing our annual March tradition. March Madness. Of March Madness. Madness. We got a bracket, we're going to fill out a bracket, and chit chat about stuff mm-hmm. essentially is what we do this is how many times have we done this now one two three four five six years now jesus christ have we really i guess so this is our sixth time doing it wow that's wild uh prior to this we did uh persona characters we did aqua songs we did persona music we did nijigasaki music and then last year we did yakuza characters i have a good idea for next year but it's... I also have a good idea for next year. All right. Well, we'll have to talk and compare notes and then hopefully remember it's next year. I feel, it's, I feel like we we had done before, but we had not done before. So I was like, oh, why haven't we done this before? I wonder, if, it, this I wonder if it's the same thing. Yeah, maybe. Uh, either way, we are this year we are going to take a look at characters from Kotaro Uchikoshi games. Mm-hmm. So characters from the three Zero Escape games and the two I the Somnium File games. Uh, of course, since we are talking about characters... And ranking them and putting them against each other. There's going to be spoilers abound probably. So please be wary of that when we talk about various characters from various games and everything. So, um, all, Another caveat is that um, obviously Ujikoshi has released more games than this. But these are the ones that both of us have played. So it makes more sense for us to um, you know, have some commonality there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we do not have a full grouping of 64 entries this time around we went with 48 just because it was just easier that way you did try your best um I got so we cut 60. some like minor <laughs> characters from I, I and most of like the main characters from like the zero escape games are in here as well uh we have 48 characters to choose from uh there were 16 that got buys into the second round which is basically a lot of like main characters and main protagonists and antagonists from their respective games and everything, so that's kind of why they're there and why the other characters are not there, mm-hmm. per se. So yeah, uh, we filled out our brackets earlier. You had a rough time with it. I, I was just like, blah, 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 blah. oh, okay, that's done. <laughs> did I hit a rough time? Well, we're going to fill out our... Our group bracket. Our group bracket. I was going to say communal bracket, but I don't know if that's that's the right phrasing you would use here, but either way... Our group bracket, as we usually do for these, and then we'll just see how we come together as a unit. A duo, per se. What do we got here in our first matchup? Can I click this match details? Nope. It does not want me to do that. We have Lotus from 999, mm-hmm. and we have Chikara Horidori from I, the Somni Files. He's in the second game, the Ron Initiative, I think. Correct. The Doctor. Uh, I think this is an easy one. I agree. I think this is Lotus moving on. Yeah, yeah. All right, easy. I like things. I I like when things are easy. Uh, our second matchup, we have Snake from Nine 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 and Quark from VLR. Um, I had an easy time with this one, but I don't know if you mm-hmm. did. What was your easy time with this? Uh, I put Snake forward unsurprising yeah he's a really think, interesting character i think some of these are going to come into the um come face to face with the fact that we both have differing opinions on vlr 999 yeah um so, so like did you put cork i did but also like you have to remember i've only played 999 once and it was the weird ios version <laughs> so all oh, right all right um i i put snake ford um Mainly because he's he's such an interesting character and the dynamic he has with Clover is is really, really good. Um, mm-hmm. He has that whole like secretive kind of somewhat villainy type of like feeling to him, but obviously he's not that at all. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I also think that his uh, he he kind of like helps Junpei play the hero, mm-hmm. which is really neat. Um, there's also a few routes like, or I guess at least one route where he's just like, "All right, I'm gonna die. Let's go." just like sacrifices himself and it's like one of the most horrific things that you'll read besides the whole like blowing up people thing in 999 um i just thought he's cool as shit, honestly give me your that... your defensive quirk he's got missile pods on the side of his head uh, he, he no he has snack pods there are, those are clearly missile pods please he keeps snacks in there it's canonical uh, I don't know. Like, I, Cork's just a a kid, a little goober. A little goober. But I, I can, I can see Snake going forward here. I just like again, a lot of my knowledge for the nine 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 sub sub characters, not sub characters, like subsidiary characters, mm-hmm. isn't as well or is isn't as knowledgeable as yours is. So. Right. Um. You know, I've only played it like ten times. Yeah. I've played it once, <laughs> and I played VLR more than once. So. Right. There's um, the, the difference there. Yeah, I just think Light is a really neat character, and I wish that we got more of him. Well, let's move on to our third matchup. Who did you move forward? I put Snake forward. Oh, okay. Uh, we have Moma from I, the Somnium Files, and Tokiko Shigire from I, the Somnium Files as well. Uh, I think in my bracket, I put Moma forward just because he's a weirdo. I put Moma forward, too. And he's too. way more funnier. I, I put Moma... I mean... Tokiko is really interesting because of the whole like game breaking dynamic and all that. Um and obviously she's a significant character in Nirvana Initiative, but Moma's such a weirdo. Yeah. And he runs the freaking Yakuza and is a huge <laughs> like idol fan. It's real good. It's real fun. It's real fun. So I put him forward, you put him forward. I think he goes forward. Yeah. Uh, up next, we have Hitomi S- Sagan mm-hmm. from I, the Somnium Files, and Pewter from I, the Somnium Files. I put Pewter. I also put Pewter. Pewter goes forward. So there you go. Uh, after that, we have Mira from Zero Time Dilemma and Alice from Virtue's Last Reward. Big booby ladies. <laughs> the, the, the Battle of the Himmerhammers. <laughs> uh, I actually had a hard time with this one. Um, I ended up going with Alice. Mm-hmm. Um, but Mira is actually a really, really, I don't want to say she's a fun character cause that's not necessarily true. Um, she's obviously an important character, but she's such an interesting character in the way that she's written. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the thing that's really neat about Uchikoshi games, which this is going to sound so bizarre and I, I can't believe I'm going on the record with this. Um, but he makes sure that, like, his big booby ladies, his Himmerhammer ladies, are, like, really, really well written. And They're not one-dimensional. Exactly. Like, he's distracting you with the Himmerhammers. <laughs> um, but, but he gives you, like, some really in-depth characters. Like, Mira is genuinely unsettling at points. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I really, really struggled between the two of them, but I, I went with Alice because I, I think that her, I, I think that her, like, I guess I liked her dialogue and stuff better, honestly. <laughs> I, okay, weird thing, though, I feel like you almost convinced me that Mira should go forward with your argument there, <laughs> even I mean, though I did the same thing So why don't we put, you. Why don't we put Mira forward, then? I'm 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 okay with that. All right, Mira goes forward. <laughs> it's shocking turn of events. <laughs> uh, up next, we have Gin Ishiyagane from I, the Somnium Files, Nirvana Initiative, and Luna from Virtue's Last Reward. Um, I put Luna. I did as well. I, Gin's a really interesting character really as well. Interesting. I think. Um, but Luna is very critical to the plot of Virtue's Last Reward and also Zero Time Dilemma. Yes. So absolutely, um, and also like we have, uh, the the like cool ideas behind like robotics and everything that comes up with mm-hmm. Luna that was unexpected, and the Luna ending with like her falling apart is still one of the most heartbreaking things that I've ever played in a video game. Yeah, for sure. Oh my god, does it hurt? <laughs> yes, it's uh, so cute. 
After that, we have the ninth man from 999 and Diana from Zero Time Dilemma. I mean, I, I, Diana's obviously the choice here. <laughs> I mean, one of these characters is in the game for the whole time. One of them is in there for like five minutes. And Diana's also extremely important to the plot. Another extremely plot-critical character, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Our next match, we have Ace from 999 and Eric from Zero Time Dilemma. Okay. Eric sucks. <laughs> Okay, so I put Eric forward, honestly. Oh, wow. Um, just because he's completely bananas. Um, he's got that whole, like, I'm a nice guy and I got this pretty girl that I don't deserve. Blah, 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 blah. He's an incel. He is an incel. Um, but then, like, he becomes completely unhinged and you realize, like, oh, man, his, his backstory is really, really tragic. Um, that being said, Ace is also a very good villain. Yeah. And, um, he, he's such a subtle villain mm -hmm. that you don't, you don't really suspect it until it's like right in your face. Yeah. Um, I, I think that it's really, really cool how, um, he, he like does certain things cool in quotation marks. Um, how he does certain things to kind of like throw you off the trail. Like there's the one point where he's like, oh, well, I'm just going to inject myself with this stuff and sleep and y'all go forward. Like whatever. I'm self-sacrificing. Woo. Um, where in reality, he was actually like, hey, hey, hey I'm going to murder you all. <laughs> um, so I put Eric forward, but honestly, Ace should go forward here. Yeah, I I put Ace forward in mine. Yeah. But also, I just, I don't like Eric at all. <laughs> that's fair, that's fair. <laughs> that dude is very stinky. He's a stinky boy. He just stinky. wants ice cream and boobs. And to browse Reddit and talk about his opinions. <laughs> God. Uh, up next, we have Iris Sagan from I, the Somnium Files, and Mama from I, the Somnium Files. Um, This was an unfair mashup. To, yes. To Mama, I think. Yes, I agree. Um, because I think if like if Mama had been in the one before, Mama probably would have gone for it. But Iris mm. is such a good character. Yeah. She's I mean, so who, fun. What other character in these games is going to reference a Fortnite meme song? I mean, and also have two levels that are Pokemon Go and Minecraft. That's also true. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. And just randomly break out into song and dance, you know? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. That's what idols do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Mama, that is not to discount Mama, because Mama is a great character. Mm -hmm. Just a, like you said, I think it's a very bad matchup. It's a bad just matchup. Like, just not one you're going to win, really. Nope. Uh, up next, we have Amame Doi from I, the Somnium Files, and Dio from Virtue's Last Reward. I put one Dio forward. Did you realize put, Doi and Dio are almost the same? That's yes. You just flip some letters around. I put a Mame forward in this one. Did you? Yeah. Interesting. Um, Hit me with because she has because they take her from just like this very small side character in the first game. Yes. And then blow out her characterization into the second game where she's very much more of a memorable character and like she goes through a lot of very weird and tragic things to mm -hmm. where like. She has this vigilante justice idea that she's trying to pursue, and like it's not necessarily the best ideas per se, but like you at the same time, you start to like understand and like reason with her a kind of like, oh, I understand why you're doing this, but maybe you shouldn't be doing this, but maybe don't murder. I get I get it. I get it. I get it. I, think, I get it. I, th I think the problem with Dio is is that like he's a good villain in in VLR. Mm -hmm. But they don't really capitalize on him at all in the the subsequent game, which they and I should think that, have. That kind of hurts his his characterization as a whole. No, I I, I could see that. Um, and I I think you're right. I think it's super super neat that she went from like a nameless mermaid to an actual important plot character in in the second game. Um, I'd be cool with moving her forward. Okay. Uh, up next, we have Andes Komeje from I, the Somnium Files and Kizuna Chieda from I, the Somnium Files. I'm curious what you went with. I went with Kizuna. I also went with Kizuna. 
Kizuna is great. Yeah, that was that was an easy one for me. <laughs> okay. Kizuna is super great. Kizuna is real fun, yeah. Real, real fun. And, you know, goes, uh, goes through a whole lot. Very important. Yes. Has some fun song. God, that song is so fun. It's I still so I still listen to that song all the time. Both versions of it. Like well, even mm. even the Japanese version I listen to too. Um like Invisible Rainbow Arrow was a good song. Mm-hmm. Have to a Hole is incredible. It's real good. Real good. Gotta eat donuts in the bathroom. <laughs> What a line. And um there's there's another character that will come later that like their dynamic is really, really good once like they grow a bit. And I appreciate that. I was watching a VTuber recently and they were singing that song, like bits and pieces of that song. What? And I was like, Yeah. Oh my god, that's amazing. I love it. Uh, up next, we have Shoma Inda from I, the Somnian Files and Carlos from Zero Time Dilemma. I'm sorry, Shoma, but you went against Carlos. Yeah, Carlos is our boy. Carlos is our boy. <laughs> you can't, you can't beat Carlos on that. He's a, he's, he's, he's quite the dude. He's, he's, he's a himbo. Yep. <laughs> and he's a bro. He just wants to, he just wants his pals to be happy. He does, and it's so good. <laughs> I'm sorry, Shoma. What a good dude. He's such a good dude. Carlos is uh, legitimately one of my favorite characters in uh, Zero Escape. Yeah. Uh, up next, we have Seven from 999 and So Sejima from I, the Somnium Files. I went with Seven. What did I go? I probably went with... I don't remember who I went with here. I went with So, but like I feel like this is like a, a coin flip. You can go either way with this one. Yeah, I, I could see that. And I mean... Whoever goes forward is not going forward past this anyway. Yeah, I I honestly could go either way with this. Um, I just went with seven because I, I even though like you don't actually know a lot about seven, I appreciated that he went through so much effort to try and help those kids. Yeah. Um, and I do also like that. Even though he like looks gruff and is like the most physically intimidating character of nine nine nine, like he's actually a really good dude. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's what I did. I'll move seven forward. Okay, I'm okay with that. Okay. Uh, up next we have Ota Matsushita from I the Somnium Files and Q from Zero Time Dilemma. You want to know my hot take? I want, give me your hot take. And maybe we may have similar hot takes here. I went with Ota. Oh, that is a hot take. It is, because he's also just kind of a loser. Hmm. Um, hmm. It, it, I, I'm not even going to debate that. Like, he is, he's kind of a loser. No, um, I, I'm not, I won't argue with you on that. You're right. But... He's got a sweet mullet. <laughs> <laughs> so um, bad. I just think he's, he's, he's a, He's a fun character. He's a stupid character. Um, I, I enjoyed him a lot. I could see this honestly going either way. I went with Q. Okay, give me because I thought Q's story in Zero Time Dilemma was very interesting with how you know it ties into the the mystery of the Q team in general. Yes, of like you know who exactly is who in this scenario and like who is the big Q? reveals of like what Q is and who Q is and everything. I thought those were very interesting and well done. So I think that put it a little bit ahead of Ota for me, who Ota's just like, Ota's just a dude for me. This is a loser. A little loser dude. He's a little loser dude. Um, uh, I mean, he's he is a good character, I would I would say, but like, I thought the story of Q and like all of the, like, the surroundingness of his characterization and everything and the mysteries around it were just more interesting to me. All right. I say Q goes forward then. Okay. Uh, up next, we have Clover and Santa from 999, and Clover's also in Virtue's Last Reward. I had such a hard time with this one. I can imagine you having a hard time with this. I had such a hard time with this one. This was probably one of the ones that took me the longest to even decide. Mm-hmm. Um, And what I went with, it, it hurts, but it felt like the right decision for me. Mm-hmm. Um, Because I went with Santa. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, I I think you would understand why. Um, 
but I, I, I still think about his scene where he's like sitting on the staircase talking to you about like how, how he had to like help out his little sister and, um, they didn't have a whole lot and he, he was trying to basically like give her a good life and then like when you put everything together and you're like oh sh he's talking about akane it's heartbreaking and like you go through the backstory of like what they all went through which clover has too that's to be fair clover was there too um but clover didn't lose a sibling in that and so santa ended up going through this entire like convoluted plot helping her survive um and he comes off as kind of like a butthole at times um he also does have that iconic line of like do you even know japanese or do you even speak japanese and it's like ha ha ha, ha, ha. um but um he's he's very very good. Also in the voice version of Sean Chiplock. <laughs> uh, I went with Clover just because I have more experience knowing Clover and everything, but like I am perfectly fine deferring this to you and going with Santa. Okay. Yeah, I felt bad about this because I love Clover. Um, I think Clover is a really fun character. Uh, I, I know that she... Like, the way that she plays off her, like, cuteness to get away with stuff is is pretty interesting. Um, her relationship with, with um, Steak, Light, whatever you want to call him, is also fascinating. Do not hit me in the knee. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I, I had to go with Santa. That's fine. All right, we have our final matchup of the opening round. We have Le Leon... How would you say his last name? Twining? So Twining? Twi Twining? From I, the Somnium Files, Nirvana Initiative, and K from VLR. I I remember when we talked about uh, Nirvana Initiative, how much we had the turnaround on Leon. Yes. And just how much we were like, oh, this guy's going to suck. And then by the end, they're like, this guy is so good. Right? Like, <laughs> and... I, I thought he was going to be terrible, and he was one of the best characters of that game. Mm-hmm. And on the opposite side, we have Kay, who perhaps is the most fumbled character in Virtue's Last Reward, and maybe in, in all of Zero Escape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think this is an easy I, move I, forward for Leon. I agree. Um, although we do get that one great scene with Kay on the on the um, the one ride. But, yes, that's that's pretty good. But that's not enough to overtake Leon, honestly. Yeah. Leon's uh, so right. good. Let's move on to the second round. We're going to see some new faces as well because the people who had buys are going to show up in here now as well. Yep, yep, yep. Our uh, first match of the second round, we have Junpei Tenbyoji from all the Zero Escape games and Lotus. I mean, easy. this is a very easy choice. <laughs> easy. Easy. Uh, next, we have Zero the Third from Virtue's Last Reward and Snake from 999. Ziggy. Fido. Fido. <laughs> <laughs> Zero the Third is very good, but also is just a mascot character, and it's also very dumb. Yeah, yeah. Zero so, the Third's really good. Uh, I I feel like I know your answer to this. You do know my answer to this. And that's probably Snake moving forward. Correct. But I just wanted to do the, the Zero the Third Siggy Fido thing. No, that's fair, because that's, that's brilliant. And Zero the Third is a really good character. It's real fun. Real fun. Uh, next up, we have Sigma Klim from Virtue's Last Reward and Zero Time Dilemma and MoMA from I and the Somnium Files. Yep. All right. Yes. All right. Next one. <laughs> Go for it, Sigma. Uh, we have Kurito Ryuki from I the Somnium Files and Pewter from I the Somnium Files. I went with Ryuki. Yeah, I think that's the fair choice here. Uh, up next, we have Gab from Gab! Zero Time Dilemma and Mira from Zero Time Dilemma. <laughs> um... I went with Gab. You're <laughs> right. Because <laughs> Gab is a great character. Deserves the world. Good old Gab. Gab. All right. 
Up next, we have BB from I, the Somnium Files, Nirvana Initiative, and Luna from Virtue's Last Reward. I once again went with Luna. I went with BB. Did you? Hit me yeah. with your explanation. I think BB is real cool. BB is real cool. And the the obviously the story of who BB is and the reveals of all that are very wild. And there's just some real messed up stuff in there. Mm -hmm. But I really like that the way they kind of like introduce her and you get to see like the interaction she has with these various characters and then like how that um, ultimately also kind of ties into the whole secret behind Nirvana Initiative as well. God, it rules. Um, so I thought that was all very good. And then just like the ending parts of that game where BB and Mizuki are teaming up together and like they kind of just do the same stuff, but it's just very fun and just goofy and it's just a lot of I really had a, a real good time like when they finally like unveiled her character and like she gets to like, actually like, kinda like be her own be thing. Free. Yeah. Yeah. But also Luna's very good as well, so like I can definitely see this being an argument for either or going forward. Can I be real with you? Yes. There's a matchup that's coming up that neither one of them's gonna go forward. Mm-hmm. So I would be fine with whoever you want, whether it's BB or Luna. I mean, I could flip a coin. Okay. If I could find a coin. I don't have a coin. I should have a coin around here somewhere. Oops, I hit my microphone. Bonk. Where are my coin? I found a coin. Coin found. All right, I will go heads will be BB, Luna will be tails. Obviously, no one else can confirm this but me, so you'll have to believe that I'm telling the truth. I trust you. Had to make sure I caught the coin as well, or else that would have been a failure. <laughs> it is heads. Heads. I don't remember who heads was. That is BB. BB. BB, go forward. Congrats. All right. Next up, we have Phi from Virtue's Last Reward and Zero Time Dilemma and Diana from Zero Time Dilemma. Uh, a family matchup here. It's a family matchup. I went with Phi. Yeah, Phi is just amazing. Amazing. Both of those games. Like For just sure. overall, her personality is fun. Her designs are fun. Her interactions with people are amazing. Like she's mm. such a good character. Yeah. Like that's not to discount Diana. She's also a very good character. But like you're going against Phi. Come on. Uh, up next, we have Delta from Zero Time Dilemma and Ace from Nine Nine Nine. I went with Delta. <laughs> is it purely off of that meme video? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Same. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you are I feel like, god that is like one of the videos we would pass along with each other for just every now and then and it's so good it's so funny it makes me laugh every time it's just the dumbest thing ever but it's so good look parked on my phone so i can send it whenever or if i just want to watch it when i'm having a bad day <laughs> the power to mind <laughs> you are a Dance. The days dancing as those quotes are happening. <laughs> <laughs> God. Literally the only re I also thought it was funny because it's like, oh, Phi and Delta are going against each other. But like, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. Isn't life simply unfair? <laughs> <laughs> Picture a snail. <laughs> Oh, man. Yep. All right. Next matchup, we have Kaname Date from I, the Somnian Files, and Iris Sagan from I, the Somnian Files. Hello, Date. Hello, Date. Congratulations. You're moving on. Correct. Date's very good. Date's so good. Yeah. Uh, up next, we have Uru Somazuki, the Terror, or from I, the Somnian Files, Nirvana Initiative, or Amame Doi from I, the Somnian Files. Um... I would go with I would go with an Alame on this one. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Like I think the overall like idea of terror is an interesting concept, but like they don't really get that much characterization no. at all outside of you get to doing an escape room mm -hmm. <laughs> puzzle section, which is interesting. Yeah. But I think Am Amame's uh characterization throughout the entirety of that game is more interesting than yeah. terror's is. Yeah, I agree. And, For like, sure. most of the time, Terra's dead anyway. Yes, also true. Whoops. Uh, up next, 
we have Akane Kurashiki from all the Zero Escape games and Kizuna Chieda from I, the Somnium Files, Nirvana Initiative. Akane. I think I, I think this is another unfortunate matchup. It is an unfortunate matchup. It's got to be Akane. Yeah, for sure. Uh, up next, we have Tama from I, the Somnium Files, Nirvana Initiative, and Carlos from Zero Time Dilemma. Carlos, go forward. Did you also put Carlos? Yeah. Okay, good. I good. think I did. Good, good, good. I mean, I can go check real quick. I mean, you could also just agree with me and be like, yeah, I did. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. Up next, we have Iba from I, the Somnium Files, and Seven from 99. Iba. You. Yep, that's the one. What? I just saw what you sent me on the phone. Oh. Because that gift takes a while to send. So. It does. It's such a big gift that it takes forever it to send. <laughs> but it's worth it every time. Worth it every time. Uh, up next, we have Falco, aka Saito Sejima from I, the Somnium Files, or Q from Zero Time Dilemma. Um, Saito's a really good villain. I went with Saito on this one. Saito's a really good villain. Yeah. I would go with Saito. Yeah, I think that's the play here. Yeah. Uh, up next, we have Mizuki Date from Eye of the Somnium Files versus Santa from 999. It's an unfortunate mashup. Mizuki's got to go forward. 100%. 100%. Uh, and finally, our final matchup of the second round, we have The Boss from Eye of the Somnium Files versus Leon Twining from Eye of the Somnium Files Nirvana Initiative. I went with Leon. Really interesting. What did I go with? I think I went with The Boss. The boss is a very good character. Uh huh. I really like the boss. I'm just still so impressed by like the turnaround I had on Leon. Mm-hmm. And there are some things about the boss that are not explained yet, and that bothers me. Well, there's still time. We, there could be more games. Who knows? No, I know, I know. I I mean, there <laughs> are obviously going to be more games because Ujikoshi's basically already talked about that. Yeah. Um. But. Yeah, I just that turnaround on Leon was yeah, I think that's fair. Really good. I'm okay with either of these two going forward. So if we want to put Leon forward, it's fine. I yeah, mean, he's not making it. Past he's not making it past that one. So I mean, that's that's the thing. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we have 16 remaining now. Bum bum bum. The sweet 16. Our first matchup is Junpei versus Snake. I mean, this one's obviously got to be yeah. Junpei. Jump, jumpy. Jump. Jumpy. Uh, up next, we have Sigma and Ryuki. This is an unfortunate matchup for Ryuki mm-hmm. because yeah. Sigma's got to go forward, which then yeah. makes the next one so hard. <laughs> uh, we have Gab versus BB. <laughs> as funny as Gab is, I think it's got to be BB. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gab. Uh, we have another f- family matchup. <laughs> <laughs> Fi just gonna have to fight her family the whole time. Yeah, we got Fi versus Delta, and this is gonna be Fi. It's gotta be Fi. Yeah, uh, we have Date versus Amame. Date. It's Date. Yeah, uh, Akane versus Carlos. This was another unfortunate matchup. Yeah, for Akane. Psych. No. <laughs> Akane. Uh, we have Iba versus Falco or Saito. Uh, I went with Aiba. Yeah, I think that's fair. And then Mizik, Mizik, blah, 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 blah. Mizuki versus Leon. That's going to be Mizuki. That Mizuki. was a very quick. That was very quick. We have the the round of eight, the Elite Eight now. Now it so starts getting get real hard. This first one is going to be an interesting discussion, I think. It's Cause... Junpei versus Sigma, which I think is the antithesis of both of our ideas of characters in zero escape because we definitely are gonna have different answers for this yeah i guarantee we're gonna have different answers for this so the question is how do we resolve this that is the question um you're very aware i went with junpei oh 100 percent. yeah i completely get that i would not even doubt that for a second and i 100 percent know you went with sigma 100 percent. yep <laughs> um both of them are amazing protagonists Yes, I agree with you 100%. Um, I think the character development you have with these characters is just unreal. Um, like, with Junpei, you go from this, like, 
kind of goofy college kid who like cracks jokes and is trying to like make light of things um and like runs into his childhood crush and is like trying to cheer her up and make everything better um to a very very jaded man I like you're trying to figure out timeline wise how do where do I go from here? I, I was trying to figure it out. I was like, how do we how do we do this? Uh, I mean, to be fair, you could also call him a jaded man uh, later on, but yeah, uh, yeah you told me <laughs> you're not wrong. He's he's very jaded. He's very hurt. He's very traumatized. Um, but he still has some of that like wisecrackingness to him that I appreciate. But he also like doesn't know how to really resolve his feelings that he has because. He's still, he's been chasing after Akane for how long at this point? And he's, he's upset with her in a way, but he's also like very much still cares about her. Um, it's really interesting to see. And then later on, way down the road, you end up getting old man Junpei, yep. um, which like <laughs> that reveal. That reveal Real still good. gets Real me good. every time. Um, and you see, like, he's he's kind of given up on her at that point. And, you know, he's he taking care of Quark and, and making sure the Quark's fine. Um, so you get to see that, like, grandpa dynamic that you would mm -hmm. never have expected from Junpei. But you also see that he still has that flame for her no matter what. Right. Um. So, man... Junpei, he's one of my favorite protagonists in all of gaming. I'm, also, I'm, I'm well aware of that, yes, for sure. <laughs> also, he looks kind of like Marty McFly in 999, and that's cool as Um, Hit me with your Sigma. I'm going to make an argument against Sigma, actually. Against Sigma, okay. Yeah, because I think, like he's like... Look, Junpei is very good. I will not argue with that with you on that any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. I will say I think the the reason Sigma is very good is that he has that pairing with Phi. Yes. And those two together are like magic. A plus. They're able to just riff on each other. They have such a fantastic dynamic mm -hmm. that plays through both of those games throughout throughout the entirety of both of those games that you really don't get with that with any of the other characters in like the same way essentially right right um however if you look at sigma just by himself i don't know if he necessarily matches up in the same heights as junpei does i could see that um because a lot of like you said a lot of what makes sigma so strong is his interactions with other people mm -hmm. um notably Fi and diana yeah um he He's such a like wild character because the big reveal at the end of VLR is so unexpected. Uh-huh. Um, but then like you have in um Zero Time Dilemma, like old man version of him in the younger body. <laughs> the flip flop. The flip flop. Yeah, you've got the flip flop of that. Um, hey, do you like ants? You want to talk about ants? Because he's he's going to tell you about some ants. Um, do you want to hear about his massive dong that he can put into a... I forgot what shape he says he can put it in. Do you remember? No. I forget what shape he says he can shape it into. Um, but... Um, I, I, I do think that one of the things that is weirdly endearing when i don't normally like it which this is probably going to come up again later is i normally don't like like the really really pervy characters mm -hmm. and he definitely has that streak but it's kind of endearing when he does it for some reason even though like by the end of it you're like oh god this was just a creepy old man making like pervy comments on his <laughs> daughter oops <laughs> oops um didn't know that yet <laughs> didn't know that yet uh, and Technically Clover, too, but um, not related there. He is a very, brain very... did not match his body at that point. No, no, that is correct. Um, I really like him as a character, and you know that for a fact. Yeah. Um, 
But Junpei is my boy. Junpei is my boy. Yeah, I, I think I think the play is Junpei here. Like I, these are two very good characters, but I think Junpei just has more going for him yeah. than Sigma does at this point. Poor boy. Poor boy. He's so uh, traumatized. It's true. Uh, which one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm talking about Junpei, but both. <laughs> Uh, up next, we got BB and Phi. Phi goes forward. Yep. Sorry, BB. Uh, next up, we have Date and Akane. This one made me sad because I obviously went with Akane. Ooh. Um. But I struggled with this. I I went with Date. Did you? All right. Mm -hmm. Give me your reasoning. God, Dante is just such an interesting protagonist, especially like everything that happens through the first I the Somnium file games with all of the body switching nonsense and everything. Mm -hmm. And just the way he has to like figure everything out. Also while he's like caring for Mizuki as as well. Um and then you just see like the different side of him in the second game where he's kind of like a mentor esque character, mm -hmm. but also is kind of gone for most of the game and then comes back and he's just still kind of just a weird self, but you know, he just, he has all these weird quirks to him and everything. You know, he is kind of like the pervy character. Like you said, like yep. Sigma is yep. maybe a little bit more so in this aspect. A like, bit. Yeah. He's just incredibly charming and endearing, he's endearing that like you're able to kind of overlook it and everything. And just like, he has all these really good relationships with like all the people he like kind of knows and everything and brings out the best in a lot of people that you really wouldn't kind of expect from a character such as that, mm -hmm. that it's just, he's a very, he's a very good protagonist for those games, especially the first game in particular. No, I completely agree. He was, he was amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's going to be somewhat obvious why I went with Akane, but I'm going to go ahead and explain it anyway. Um, Akane is both protagonist and villain. Yes. And you don't... I mean, you see that with Sigma, too, honestly. But Akane is still the villain, sort of, in VLR, too. Um, Akane has this wild dynamic to her that she's, like, kind of naive. She's really cute. Um, she... she plays up that relationship she has with Junpei often in basically every game she's in. Um, but then she also has a very, very like dark self-serving side to her. A dark self-serving stubborn side. You yes. Say. Yes. Yes. Um, I mean, obviously she put together the whole situation with, with Santa um in in 999 in order to save herself her past self um and i mean she she basically has like sets up the situation where ace will murder like three guys to get revenge which is nuts um but then you know she sets up the whole thing with VLR with Sigma's help and then mm -hmm. dies ish um and then she's a big part of why zero time dilemma happens you have her moments where she like completely breaks like i still can't get over that whole like chainsaw bit with her oh <laughs> it's brutal um so she has this like really intense drive to live um she obviously has her weak spots, which are Santa and Junpei. Um, and I do find it interesting that, you know, Junke Junpei... <clears throat> three, two, one. Junpei could potentially feel like he was used by her. Um, but I don't think she sees it that way. Because she very genuinely does have feelings for him. You can, you can tell and... Zero Time Dilemma proves that um, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and, you know, our, our boy Carlos is wingman and hard there. Like He sure is. If, if we didn't ship Akane and Junpei, he was going to make sure that we shipped it regardless. 
He's like, those two are going to be together, whether they like it or not. I'm going to make sure it happens. They're just dumb. They're just not getting it together. Get it together, kids. Um, which is, thank you, Carlos. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, sort of how you were saying how Sigma has the really interesting dynamic of Phi. Akane and Junpei have a very, very different kind of dynamic, but they really play off of each other in a strong way. Mm -hmm. Um, I I just love that side of her that like there's there's that really dark part of her that you wouldn't expect. She's got layers like she's an onion. Oh my god. Oh my god. She does. Um I love Akane. She's terrifying. <laughs> She's also adorable. Also, hey, do you want to hear about Ice Nine and the Titanic? The Titanic? Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell me about Leonardo DiCaprio. Near far. Um, but I mean, like, she died as, like, what, a nine year old? And then, like, time travel shenanigans decided, like, no freaking way. I'm not dying that way. I'll never get over it the first time I played this game. And the, the like, realization of what was going on with the, like, top screen and bottom screen hit me. I was like, holy sh**. Akane's been, like narrating so much of this without me realizing it. But kiddo, Akane. She's very good. <laughs> Can't tell her anything. Mm -mm. So what's the move here? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> it's a very good question. <laughs> <sighs> hmm. 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 We're gonna get I into think... some some big arguments here. <laughs> I think you might shank me if we don't move Akane forward. Am I gonna have a bit of Akane in me? Yes, you're gonna come at me with an axe to grind. Wee. Um. I'm like ah. I will once again clarify. I love Date. He's a very good character. I feel like if he had not been matched up against Akane, he would have gone further on my end. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. That was an unfortunate matchup. That was the second one that I was like, oh, no, this is terrible. Oh, no, my ear. Uh, all right, our final matchup of this round. We have Aiba and Mizuki. <laughs> This one was also All right, hard. we got four left. Wait, who did you put forward? It's Mizuki. Did you? Yeah, it's easy. Oh, I put Iba forward. Wait, what is wrong with you? Many things. Apparently. Uh, put Mizuki forward though. Yeah. Okay. That's the play. It's easy. Uh, GG easy. Iba's good. Iba's very good, but Mizuki is a really good character. She's a very good character. She's a lot of fun. And she, uh, she's we have... a kick to the forehead. Yes. Like a warhead. Uh, we have four left, which uh, it's it's unsurprising that uh, most, or I guess all of these characters came from the buy rounds. They had the buys originally. Mm -hmm. The only character that didn't come out of the buys from the eight that we had earlier was BB. Only one that came out of the opening round. Nope, just kidding. She also had a buy. I lied. I'm a liar. Don't listen to me. I lie. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, here's our first final four matchup. It's Junpei versus Phi. I knew we were going to come to this. Mm -hmm. This is what I have on my matchup. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're going to have a real hard time with this one. Mm -hmm. 
because I know you picked Phi. Mm -hmm. You know I picked Junpei. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Phi is maybe one of the best characters in Zero Escape. She is the best character in Virtue's Last Reward. She is maybe the best character in Zero Time Dilemma. Arguably, obviously. Um, but she's just such a, like an interesting like foil to Sigma. Mm -hmm. where, you know, he's just kind of like, I'm just a guy. Hey, and she's just like, I don't want anything to do with this. I'm going to be moody, but also I'm very smart and know what I'm talking about, and I'm very intelligent and everything. And then I'm also just going to have all this weird banter with this this doofus who just keeps making these weird remarks and just have this really good back and forth, this good rapport with him, have a good rapport with everyone else. And also I'll just like kick people every now and then do some cool I, jump kicks. I was going to bring up the kicks. You know, just fun things like that. And then in Zero Time Dilemma, it's like you get more of, more of the same essentially where she's, like, she's kind of like the problem solver of the D team essentially but you get even more good interactions like with her and Diana, especially like everything that gets revealed that with with her backstory and everything. And like she finally learns kind of like who she is and all that sort of stuff. And like everything kind of makes sense for her. And there's just really, really good moments in, in Zero Time Dilemma when you get those and everything, even though like we still should have got a good D team ending. I agree. I'm... And Zero Time Dilemma that we were very much robbed of. We were so robbed. But, like, I, Phi is maybe, like, one of my favorite characters from that entire series. So, we've run into the same problem of just, like, hmm, hmm. that doesn't really help much, but it's just, like, kind of brings us back to square one, I feel like. Right, because, I mean, Junpei is obviously one of my favorite of the entire yeah, series. Yeah, 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 yeah. does not make this easier it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> hmm. what's the play here we just close this and run away <laughs> that's the play march madness is over guys See canceled. Ya. it's canceled um I mean, I think one thing that Junpei has over her is is the the development that he goes through. He does get more development, obviously. I mean, he is in three games three compared games to two. Three games, two. Yep. Um, and he has like a very a very wide range of age periods. He is in all three games, mm -hmm. whereas Phi is kind of in that same range from VLR and Zero Time Dilemma. Mm-hmm. To where like we don't get to see a whole lot of her development. It's more we get to kind of understand like her backstory and everything, and like who yeah. she gets to who she, who, she, who she actually is as a character and everything. Um, so we don't get to see as much progression of development as you do with Junpei, considering you get to see like baby Junpei, old man Junpei, grumpy twenties Junpei. <laughs> And like how each of those different different sides of him are very different, but still encompass the same overall character. Right, right. And seeing like how going through these experiences impact him as a person. Mm -hmm. I think that's one reason why I like Junpei so much is because it very obviously changes him and has an impact on him. Um. You get less of that with Vi. She, the entire time, is kind of like calm and collected and composed, and like, "Hey, we've got to, we've got to do this thing. We just got to do it." Mm -hmm. Um, and so I guess I kind of like the the whole idea of like seeing how a very, very traumatic situation would have an impact on somebody. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that sounds kind of weird. And I'm like, yay, <laughs> trauma. Um, I love trauma. <laughs> but, like, these situations they're put in are extremely traumatic. Right. And so, like, it makes sense that you would see a character that's like, holy shit. 
I've seen myself and my friends die many, many times in very horrible ways. I thought I was going to die many, many times. And it turns out that like, hey, it was so that I could prevent the death of somebody else. And now I've been chasing her for a year and I've gone through some trying to like find her while I'm a PI, which is a career shift for him. A pie. Huh? A pie. He's a pie. Yes. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, you get the, the older version of him that's been through it and like, he still obviously holds a torch for her, but he also decides like, Hey, I gotta, I gotta care for somebody else. Like I, I gotta, I can't just live for myself now. And like the, the routes where he decides to like sacrifice either himself or everyone else in order for Quark to be happy, they're intense. And you see like how that that trauma and like that that bit of Akane is kind of rubbed off on him. It's fascinating. 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 Um I think June pays the play. I will say I moved five forward, but five was not the winner of my bracket, so. Oh, sh really? Mm-hmm. Hey, you want to know a secret? What's that? Junpei was not the winner of my bracket. <gasps> oh, no. I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, let's move on to our final final four matchup. It is Akane versus Mizuki. Hey, remember how you were saying about how trauma shapes people? <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk about Mizuki and how that's basically her as well. Yeah, I mean, you're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, I feel like in the first game, she's like very, like a very good foil to Date. Yes. Because like they are very clearly two opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of personality, but still they're able to come together because of you know they care for each other and everything. And, you know, Date having to take care of her because her parents are dead and everything. And, you know, he's also trying to solve the case of why her, her parents are dead and everything. Um, but even before that, he was, like, taking care of her because he was friends yeah. with her dad, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um. So, uh, like, he was a big part of her life even before he became, like, her actual guardian. Mm -hmm. uh, in, the, in, this, in the first game, especially, you kind of get to see, like, you know who she is, like, her friend groups and everything, and, like, how Date views her as a person and everything, and how she's able to kind of come in and help on cases every now and then, even though she's, like, she definitely shouldn't because she's a, a, child. a child. But she's also, but she... like, a superhuman strength child. Yeah, exactly. So, like, there's these weird dichotomies to her and, like, how she's also having to deal with the fact that, like, oh this is a whole case about like my mom dying and everything. And like, I don't, I'm still a kid having to process all this. It's not great or anything. And like, also my friends are involved in this whole thing. So like, it's also super not great. Dante's involved in this and things aren't going well for him and everything. So like, there's a lot of good moments in the first game for that. But I feel like where she shines in particular is the second game. Correct. Where they allow her to be a protagonist and you get to see how she's grown from the first game to this game. And even, it, even some... in some ways not grown. True, exactly. Um, there is, of course, some weirdness every in there because, like, you know, B some parts B of that game you're not, you're not playing as, as Mizuki. You're playing as BB. Right. But, you know, the parts where you do play as Mizuki, you get to see how she's grown, how she's, like, taken all of her experiences from the first game, her experiences with living with Date and knowing him, her experiences with all of her friend groups and everything, and uses those to become, like a detective in her own way and how like especially she's able to like have this different kind of relationship with Iba than Dante mm -hmm. has um which I think is a lot of fun and very interesting and just the ways that they're able to make her more into a protagonist role in the second game I think is very fun and good and so unexpected Yes, exactly. Like, because like when you th when you think of a sequel to I the Somnium Files, you don't think, "Hey, let's make Mizuki the protagonist or one of the protagonists of this game." Right. You would think, "Oh, she's probably going to be a you know a side character for Date again, and Date's going to be a protagonist." But it's like, no, that's not the case at all. Well, and even like her dynamic with Ryuki is really, really interesting. 
Yeah, exactly. Because that boy's going through it. He's um, very much going through it. And and she's kind of has to like carry things while he's going through his his episodes, essentially. Right, right, and like you know, she. You also see like the forgiving side of her because, like, obviously, some of the things that happen to her are influenced by like what Ryuki does, mm-hmm. and she still like is able to forgive him and understand like why he did what he did. Yeah. Um, she still thinks he's like a baby essentially at points. <laughs> he's like, stop drinking. <laughs> ah! Um, but like she, she genuinely is like, Hey dude, I want you to be okay. Yeah. Um, so she, she shows off the caring side, you know, she's a big part of, like the relationship with Kizuna and Lian, which is cool. Well, her and Bibi both are, but um, she she's the tsundere who looks out for the best in people, even she, though she might not actually like show that sometimes. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, finding out the whole thing with um, like her parents weren't actually her parents. How she had to go through the like intense stuff with the Horidori Institute. Mm-hmm. How BB was involved with that. Yeah. Um. Again, like you said, she she kind of like channels the fact that she's got all this trauma in order to become a stronger person and help out others in her own way. Mm-hmm. Plus, she's sassy as. F- yeah, she's real fun. <laughs> she's she real to ride fun. A scooter around. <laughs> I love this bonk thing. people with a lead pipe. Bonk, bonk. What's 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 better than that? Keek them. <laughs> Real good. But she also does have her weaknesses. Like in the final fight, you know, she's just like, Date's gonna lose if he doesn't have Iba. Here, you take Iba. I can do it. I'm superhuman. Yeah. And then she realizes, like, oh god, I can't do this. But she's still like trying very, very hard to overcome it. But you know, is able to. <laughs> she's a, she's a shonen protagonist at that point. Oh my god. Um. But then I, I do it because my friends are here. I also love her dynamic with BB. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like once they do that reveal, like the two of them interacting is so funny. Mm-hmm. But also, like you have some really like touching moments with them. Yeah. It was very unexpected. I think they do just so much with her character in, in, in two games, which is obviously kind of a short amount of time. Yeah. But you really get to see, like, explore like all these different facets, facets of her character and everything in a way that I think was just completely unexpected coming out of like that first game. Mm-hmm. And I think they they do a, just like a, a really great job of like handling all of that and like adding in so much more depth that you really wouldn't have expected. And also, it's very funny that she's Uji Koshi's like conduit for telling chuds on the internet to shut up. <laughs> I was literally about to bring that up. I was literally about to bring that up because one of the funniest things about um, Mizuki as a character is that like. In the first game, she has this entire line about, like, uh, how she's supportive of LGBT people and how, like, people should just, like, respect them and all that. And there was this, like, nonsense of, like, oh, well, that's just the localizers adding it in. And then Uchi Koshi in the second game is like, oh, no, 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 no. What if I double down on this and add more of it and just keep adding more of it? How you feel now, kids? (laughs) <laughs> and it's all through Mizuki. It's great. It's so fantastic that he's just like, yeah, you guys are dumb. Mm-hmm. I do think it's interesting as well. If you like, if you look at Mizuki in a way compared to Akane, like they essentially are kind of molded from the same clay, essentially, but like. They go in two very different paths, and you could definitely have an argument of like, oh, if Mizuki had done this, she could be end up winding up kind of like Akane, or if Akane had done this, she could wind up in being like Mizuki. Like they kind of have similar start points, but go off in different directions. But they have 
very much a like a singular or not a singular point but like various points where like they could essentially almost become each other's character Mm -hmm. which i think is also very interesting but yeah i think mizuki is very good mizuki is who won my bracket entirely Mm -hmm. okay i i got to the end and i was just like huh right (laughs) so here's the play yeah I I th- I am willing to concede Mizuki moving forward here. Okay. Over Akane. Okay. I'm waiting for the butt. <laughs> I don't know that I can I can select her as like the final winner though. And again, yeah. like I will tell you straight up, now my bracket is shot because my final winner is not in there. <laughs> because I picked Akane. Um, yeah, unsurprisingly. N- yeah. Um, so, like, I'm not winning this. That's, there's that. <laughs> um, <sighs> I do, I do think even, like, regardless of the, the last matchup or anything, I think it's really neat to have two characters from two different series in the finals. I agree. Because it, it just shows how good Uchikoshi is at writing and writing just incredibly well-defined characters as well just throughout all five of these games. And I think that's what's make this bracket so much fun is that all of these are such good characters mm-hmm. and there's so much depth there and... While there can be similarities, like we were just talking about with Akane and, and Mizuki, like they're very different characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and even like we were saying, Junpei and his trauma, and her and her trauma, like, well, and to be fair, Akane and her trauma, um, like they all, they all go different ways with it. These are all yeah. like some pretty brutal games. With some like crazy twists, but understatement, <laughs> un- understatement. But <laughs> I mean, it's such a testament to the character writing that's done here that, like, we're even having to to argue these as much as we are because there are very few characters in in these games that I'm like, I genuinely just, bleh. um. I, I've said it before, and you're very aware of this. Like, I, Uchikoshi makes some of my favorite games, period. Done. Yeah. Amazing. Incredible. I I mean, I think we said it when we talked about Nirvana Initiative, but, like, there are very few people that make games like Uchikoshi makes games. Right. And even then, like, he... he, he with you he's like hey i know i know you know what kind of game you're getting into what if i just mess with you now yeah gonna have fun yeah cool finger guns <laughs> or again like trolling on the on the chuds like that's hilarious and even like this is unrelated to this bracket entirely but like he's such a good dude like on twitter just shutting down people of like the b- that comes out Mm-hmm. He's like, I don't want you like in my game. He's like, screw you, man. <laughs> but he's so nice about it. Yeah. So nice about it. Um but genuinely, um these are some of the best games, like in terms of character writing, in terms of twist storytelling. I am so impressed every time I play one of his games. And I will forever be thankful that I picked up 999 on a whim when I worked at GameStop. Even though that cover art was terrible. (laughs) And I had no reason to pick it up. Yeah. It was a game changer for me. That being said, I still don't know who wins. I I, I think it's fair to put Junpei forward. I will... I don't don't think you're going to be swayed at it. In any sort of way. And I think the arguments you've made for Junpei have been just rock solid throughout. Thank you, thank you. I, that I don't know if there's anything I could say to 
convince you otherwise. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Yay! Congrats, Junpei! So there you go. It's really, really funny, though, that neither of our final bracket winners won. I, I, I like it when that happens. Like I do, chose, too. We can come together and have a different opinion to just from our just singular thoughts that we're having. And again, like I, I like I told you, I think yesterday or something, like I went to the bracket with like no preconceived notions of like what I, th- I was going to do. And when I got to the end, of it, I was just like, oh, that was interesting. All yeah. Right. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was so. I was honestly worried when we were doing this. I was going to lean too heavily on Zero Escape mm-hmm. um, just because of how much I love those games. And I was very pleasantly surprised when I saw how many of the eye characters like got as far as they did for me. Um. Because we've said it on the the I podcast that we've done, it's some of the strongest storytelling in those games. Very much so. And those characters are amazing. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm glad that I didn't like completely let the the nine 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 blinders take over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because I knew that that was a risk that we were going into here, but um. I have I have let let other games into my heart and soul and I'm happy about that. Yeah. I will say my the final eight characters in mm-hmm. this bracket are I think the exact same that I had in mind, so Really? Yeah. Um eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mine were not the same, <gasps> I don't think. Cause <gasps> I, I don't think because I had Junpei and Sigma. Uh-huh. I had Luna and Phi. Yeah, I think BB's probably the the difference there. Yeah, I had um, Date and Akane. Mm-hmm. And then I had Aiba and Mizuki. Yeah, so BB's the, the difference maker there. Okay, but I, still, I had Luna. Seven of eight, the same there is, you know, pretty telling. But then we get to the end, and it's completely different from either of ours. Yeah. And I'm 100% fine with that, honestly. Like, I think yeah. I think that... Every argument we made here was a good argument. Mm-hmm. And I think that these characters are just insanely good. And I'm sorry, Gab. I'm sorry, Gab. Gab, you did your best. You, you, you got far. You got far. Good, good boy. Good job, Gab. Good boy. But yeah, that's our that's more March, March Madness for, for this year, for 2023. Congrats, Junpei. Congrats, old brooding young man <laughs> old brooding young man who does eventually get the girl he does good for him so yeah that is uh that's march madness for this year fun time as always that's a fun time yeah mm-hmm. we'll have to talk about what our idea for next year is i wonder if it matches mm-hmm. uh but yeah that's gonna do it for this week's podcast so if you'd like more from us Head on over to seasonalanimecheckup.com or sac.cool. It's where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Jared and Now Watch. You can also find columns and reviews on the site as well. If you'd like more from Anladium, go to anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. You can follow us on Twitter and TikTok at Anime Checkup. You can buy our books, One Shiny Moment, a critical analysis of Love, Life, Sunshine, and Hot Tubs and Pac-Man on Amazon.com. And you can just support <laughs> You can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash S-A-C-O-V-A. Buy us a slice of pizza, get access to unedited versions of the podcast early, and a wealth of bonus content as well. My dude, you just went blah, 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 in a British yeah. accent somehow. Oi, Briv. <laughs> uh, next week, it's April Fool's Day. You want to talk about an Atome? No, actually, I don't. Oh, okay. We got a different game to talk about. A game we have somehow neglected to talk about for 326 episodes. What? It's time to talk about Persona 4. <gasps> yes! So we're going to talk about that next April Fool's. This isn't an April Fool's joke. We're actually going to talk about that. We're actually going to talk about Persona (laughs) 4. This isn't a joke. No, we're both really jazzed about this. So we're going to talk about that next week. Yay!